Just off camera, you told us that you go to meetup groups for writers. And mm -hmm. I'm just wondering what meetup groups strike your eye in terms of why you go to it and, and what do you get out of going to them? Well, when I was first starting writing, I had some people help and give me some advice. Uh, the first writers group that I went to, that I was a part of, it was all sitcom comedy writing and uh, the very first notes I ever got on my first TV script was, this was so boring I was falling asleep. <laughs> and, and we all laughed and because uh, comedy writers can be, can be pretty vicious in a uh, funny way. And, uh, and then he said, when you got to this part, that's when I woke up and it was really funny. So this group showed me that right away that you need honest feedback, okay? But constructive criticism. Because this, this particular writer, he gave me that note, but then he told me what was working. So I go, you know what? You're right. I feel the same thing. I agree with the note. And so it really helped me out. That group, that little writer's group I was in, eventually dissolved because everyone got work. That's a great reason for a group to dissolve, right? Everybody was working right. on all these shows. So, um, so I thought, you know, it was really helpful when I was first starting out. So I thought, I, I like to help people too. So I go to the meetup site and I see those writers groups. So I go to some of these and I just give them notes, you know, gentle notes, encouraging notes, but honest notes. And, you know, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's helpful to people. And if you don't ever... Uh, give something back or help out other people, it, that doesn't feel very good, you know, so. So, just, okay, so that's yeah. your way of giving back. What do you see, and I won't ask you five things, but what do you see as <laughs> several top things that most of, most writers, new writers, have trouble with? Uh, well, the two big things are, one is passive lead character. I see that quite a bit, uh, I see it over and over. Um, their lead character has a bunch of people coming at them and doing things, you know, saying, oh, you should do this. And he goes, okay, and he does it. It's got, if it doesn't come from within the character, then you've got no train, you've got no choo-choo pulling the train. It's not pulling the story train. What you've got is a caboose pushing it. That doesn't work, okay? You need to pull it and going somewhere. And uh, I see that a lot, just with this passive lead characters. And the other thing is, uh, either no conflict or very lowercase conflict, where people are, say if it's TV, people are flipping through channels and they watch something for five, six seconds. If there isn't deep conflict that's popping off the screen, they're gonna keep flipping. They're flipping past your show, okay? So you like conflict, you know? When you watch TV, you like it. Put it in your script. One of the reasons it's difficult is because in real life, people don't like conflict. If you're a nice person, okay, you don't want to yell and argue with people and you don't want to hurt people's feelings, okay? But in real life, that's great. In a script, that's boring. That's just really boring, okay? So let the conflict go, okay? Let it go into that script, put it in there, and then it will jump off the page when people read it. You gotta have it. Passive lead character, and not enough conflict. I see those two things all the time. And the other thing that I see is people are safe. Um, uh, I have a professional comedy writers group and people apply to it. And uh, we've had like a thousand people apply to this group and there's only 20 people in it. So it's, you know, we always select certain people to be in it. It's a, uh, most of whom are professional or they're showrunners and they write for them shows. For them. And if they're newer writers, they're good and they're on their way. And I get people applying to the group, you know, perfectly nice people, people who send their script and they have screenwriting degrees, you know, sometimes multiple degrees in, in writing and theater and everything in their script happens at exactly the right time. The exciting incident, the first act break, the midpoint, the third act, uh, and all these story threads are perfectly correct and I don't give a crap because they were so busy being correct in their form they haven't put any spark of madness into the script they haven't put anything quirky and personal you know and, and it's not in there and it's like forget all this stuff you learn and just let it pour out just 
allow your craziness, your weirdness, your quirkiness to be poured into that script. That's the other mistake I see is people, they're, they're holding back. We want, this is show business. Okay, this is the one business where there's nothing wrong, okay? You can let these characters say weird things, crazy things, politically incorrect things, mean things, stupid things, anything. You have the license to do an infinite number of things. Do it! <laughs> okay, so speaking of conflict, <laughs> let's say the conflict was not in the script, but when you gave a note. Was oh. there ever conflict? <laughs> and was there ever a time, alternatively, where you thought there would be and you were scared and actually the person thanked you? Uh, yeah, that's happened. I mean, there's, there's a way to give a note. Um, your job when you give notes is to help the writer tell the story they're trying to tell, to help them tell it better. Uh, you say, hey, this character is coming off as this. Is that what, is that what you meant? And they're like, oh, no, 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 I meant to be the way. They go, oh, well, it's coming off because of this. And you tell them, and they, they're grateful. They're like, oh, I didn't realize that. You know? Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, from little things like I was giving notes to one person, and he described, a, he described a character as elderly, this elderly character. And then in the next paragraph, he called him 50 years old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, you're laughing. Um, and a lot of people at the table were, you know, around 50. <laughs> and these hosts, so I said, you know, when you say elderly, we're thinking, you know, and you say 50. Right. And he goes, well, isn't that, he was a very young writer. And he says, wasn't that, wasn't that elderly? And like, all the people they were like, no, you know? And I said, the reason this matters is because A, it's a little confusing. You we just want, you want clarity in the script. And B, if somebody who's reading this, you know, who could hire you is 50 and you call them elderly, it's just, <laughs> I create trouble, right? <laughs> so there's little notes like that. And <laughs> but I was working on a show. I came to work one day and there was a writer who was walking out with their stuff in a box and they had just been let go. And it was like, ooh. And we didn't ask the executive producer anything. We didn't, you know, but, but he said, he's a really nice guy. But he said, she didn't know when to stop defending a pitch. In the room, she's a perfectly nice woman, everybody liked her, but when you're in the writer's room at a sitcom, there's a bunch of writers there, and you'll pitch an idea. The executive producer said, oh, we need this in this scene, and you'll pitch an idea. And the executive producer will say, oh yeah, that's great, let's write that. Or they'll say, he'll say, oh, that's almost not quite, other people will pitch in, and they'll pitch something, pitch in, and like three or four pitches later, based on your pitch, you come up with a solution in the script, and you, and you write it. Or the executive producer will say, no, you should move on, okay? Because it's their job to know what's in the show. The executive producer says that. And you don't want to have discussions about it. And she kept defending. She goes, well, she kept coming back to it and goes, well, you know, if you did the thing I say, and it's like, well, <laughs> it's, it just wastes time and it puts, makes the executive producer feel bad because they've got to keep saying no. So he eventually just let her go. So I learned from that. That was in my career. Um, when you're given a note, like no, by your boss, okay, take the note, you know. Also, sometimes there's what's called, I don't know if you've heard of the concept, the note behind the note. Yeah, it's sometimes there's something under the note that is not clear, so you have to clarify the note for somebody, you know. But it's your job, if you're giving notes in professional situations, it's your job to, to explain the note until you see the light go on in their eyes, okay. That's your job to make them understand the note, you know? And maybe your note is a great note, but it's not the right note for the story they're trying to do. But when I'm working at these meetups with uh, newer writers and stuff like that, you take into account that they're new, you know? And I've seen a million scripts and I've solved a lot of script problems and they haven't seen those yet, you know? So you just try to say, hey, this problem in your script has been solved in a couple of ways by doing this and this and how does that feel? And when you're giving the note, you can't be attached to the note. If it's not, if it's not a professional situation, if you're not their boss or whatever, you can't be attached to it. You can't get upset if they don't take your note. I mean, it's not about you, okay? It's about the writer <laughs> and their script. So there's some really fun writers at these meetup groups. There's some very talented uh, people of, of, of all ages, you know, and it's great that they can come together right. and, and see their, their stuff come to life.
It's great that the over 50 ones actually can get out of the house. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. I, I'm so glad they can make it there. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, <laughs> I've written and I can't get up. 